Oi. Get you out of here. Sorry. Yeah. Good job. <laughs> you want a noodle? Yeah, I do actually. <laughs> go on, get a noodle. We'll go float down that anchor. After staying in Litchfield National Park for two nights, we headed south about 300 kilometres to a town called Catherine, where we would base ourselves for a few more nights. Before checking into our cabin, we stopped in at Catherine Hot Springs. Make sure that you go to the lower springs because the top springs were just so packed. In fact, if you have the time, make sure you drive an hour south to a town called Mataranka where you can visit Bitter Springs. On your walk into Bitter Springs, you'll see all these tall palm trees that have been charred from a bushfire, which make for a really cool photo. Mataranka translates to home of the snake in the language of the Yangman people who have occupied this area for about 40,000 years. This cast spring is fed by limestone formations bubbling thermals to the surface in a handful of caves around the Catherine region and was made famous by a popular novel, We of the Never Never, in 1908 and the latter film in 1982. Bitter Springs pumps out about 30 megalitres of water each day, which is equivalent to about 12 Olympic swimming pools. You can actually just let the current take you downstream right to the end and then walk back a couple hundred metres to the main plunge pool. Make sure you take some goggles and a pool noodle for an unforgettable experience in some of the bluest water you'll ever see. On the fifth day of our road trip, we made tracks towards Nitmaluk National Park, which is home to Catherine Gorge. Nitmaluk translates to place of the cicada dreaming in the language of the Jamoin peoples, who were the largest clan at the top end of Australia. For about 80 bucks, you jump into a small boat and head upstream for about 20 minutes while this guide tells you all about the history of this land, the animals that live here and crocodile safety. Before you know it, the boat trip's pretty much finished and you jump out into this ancient part of the world which kind of looks like a movie set from Indiana Jones. But the ranger just pretty much leaves you to explore all 13 of these gorges and we opted to get the canoe of all things. Um, after the extensive rundown he just gave us of crocodiles, um, do take note that we came here at the end of the dry season so apparently it's safe because they manage all the saltwater crocodiles in the waters. So it's still relatively safe, but there are freshwater crocodiles in here. So if that's not your thing, then maybe jump on the two hour boat trip that goes up and down the first and second gorge. So we're just coming up to the end of the first gorge and apparently um, what you have to do is drag your canoe from each gorge to gorge. So, this one's not too bad, it's only 30 metres, but the next one's about a kilometre, so yeah, check it out. As you can see on this massive cliff face here, the bands of which the water levels sit at in the wet season, it's really hard to fathom how big and old these cliff faces really are. Millions upon millions of years of earthquakes and torrential rain have carved a path to create this gorge. All along the river you'll come across these little beaches like this. If it has a sign on it, it means that crocs have been sighted here recently laying eggs in the sand, so it's probably best not to stop here. There's plenty more of them upstream though if you need a break. When we got to the one kilometre hike, we opted to not drag our canoes across boulders the size of Mini Coopers in about 40 degree heat. We found ourselves a nice cave for a quick little rest and then paddled back downstream to the boat. This all took about three to four hours and for only 80 bucks, I highly recommend doing it if you come to Catherine Gorge. Nipmaluk National Park, Catherine Gorge. Highlight of my life, unbelievable. Oh yeah, we made it. So if anyone's wondering how we're getting around in uh, Northern Territory, we could have hired a camper van, but you can't go to a lot of places in Kakadu. So we decided to get a uh, four wheel drive and then stay in little cabins with aircon. I tell you what, it's so worth it. So every time we go out for a day hike, we get to go back, jump in the pool and then aircon. But this is our rig. 
Got it from Thrifty. About 700 bucks for the 10 days. Not bad. Considering a camper van was about two and a half grand, we get heaps more access to all the four-wheel drive parks. And um, yeah, I don't know about you guys, but 40 degree heat in a camper van is ugh. All right, so we've just got here to Kakadu, Kuinda Lodge. And I'm um, pretty excited actually, because um, one of my old friends from down in Melbourne's coming up to uh, hang with us for a few days and go on some uh, day trips. Lukey Delahaye. Look who I found. Here we go, what have we got here? Look who we got here. Good to be here, mate. Good to see you, <laughs> you doing, mate? How you going? Good, man. Check this out, this is our room. Got a uh, nice queen there. There's also, conveniently, a it's single. Swag, doesn't it, Jakey? <laughs> <laughs> what do you reckon? See how door area? Look, there's even conveniently three fucking chairs, mate. Alright, coming down into Magook Falls. Magook, go, 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 go. Magook, or Barramundi Gorge, is located in the south of Kakadu National Park. To get to Magook, it's about a 12 kilometre drive down a dirt road. If you happen to get to Magook in the afternoon, or if you're just travelling on a budget, you can actually camp here for about $10. Everything online says that you need a four-wheel drive to access these waterfalls, but that wasn't the case in the dry season when we visited. From the car park or the campsite, if you happen to stay here, it's about a one kilometre hike and rock hop past a bunch of small, super clear little water holes. As tempting as they are to swim in, keep on walking because the payoff is worth it when you reach Magook. When you reach the main plunge pool, you'll see the water is a deep emerald colour and the banks of the water hole are lined with pandanus trees and cliff faces, which you can actually climb and jump off if you're game enough. It's also one of the only waterfalls in Kakadu that flows all year round, so it doesn't matter when you visit, you're in luck. We were only lucky enough to spot a few of the archer fish and Kakadu red dragonflies in this area, but keep an eye out for the file snakes and freshwater crocs in the pandanus tree roots, because apparently that's where they hide. Magook, what'd you reckon? Magook and good. Magook and good. <laughs> And just to top off the day, on our drive home back to the accommodation, we passed a few feral water buffaloes running alongside on the highway. We just got back to uh, Kuinda Lodge, and um, we're heading down for a few beers, and then we're gonna head into the pool for a while. So yeah, watch the sunset, a few chilly beers, 40 degrees. Sounds pretty good to me. And that's the second episode, didgery fucking done. Cheers for watching and keep posted for the third episode where we venture deeper into Kakadu National Park and visit sites such as Yellow Water Billabong and Jim Jim Falls just to name a few of the highlights.